Exercise Physiology Glycolysis Metabolic Pathway Energy is needed to fuel the body's physiological functions, growth, repair, and physical activity. The energy is produced via different metabolic pathways, that include creatine phosphate and glycolysis metabolism, which are anaerobic, as they do not require oxygen, and cellular respiration, that is aerobic, as it requires oxygen. Glycolysis is the metabolic pathway in which glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate and is far more complex than the creatine phosphate metabolism as it requires a number of enzymatic reactions. Glycolysis takes place in the cytosol of cells and during this process two ATP molecules are utilized and four ATP, two NADH and two pyruvates molecules are produced. The pyruvate can subsequently be used in the citric acid cycle, or serve as a precursor for other reactions, while NADH is taken to the electron transport chain. Glycolysis comprises two phases, the investment phase, and the energy generating phase, respectively. During the investment phase, two phosphates are added to glucose, Glycolysis begins with the enzyme hexokinase, phosphorylating glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. This is the first transfer of a phosphate group requiring energy, and the first ATP molecule is used. This is an irreversible step. Subsequently, the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase, isomerizes glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. Then, the second phosphate is added by the enzyme phosphofructokinase which utilizes the second ATP molecule and phosphorylates the fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This step is the rate-limiting step and is also irreversible. During the following step, the enzyme aldolase converts fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is converted into an glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme triosphosphate isomerase. This step completes the investment phase. During the first step of the energy generating phase, the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase metabolizes the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3-diphosphoglycerate by reducing NAD plus into NADH. Next, the 1,3-diphosphoglycerate loses a phosphate group by the action of the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase to make 3-phosphoglycerate and creates an ATP through substrate-level phosphorylation. At this point, there are two ATP created, one from each three carbon molecule. After that, the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase turns 3 phosphoglycerate into 2 phosphoglycerate, and then the enzyme enolase turns the 2 phosphoglycerate into phosphoenolpyruvate. During the final step, the enzyme pyruvate kinase turns phosphoenolpyruvate into pyruvate and phosphorylates ADP into ATP, through substrate level phosphorylation, thus forming two more ATP. This step is also irreversible. Thus, during glycolysis, from one glucose molecule and two ATP used, are produced four ATP, two NADH and two pyruvate molecules. It should be noted that, the glucose molecule contains six carbon atoms and the two pyruvate molecules contain three carbon atoms each. At this point, depending on oxygen availability, pyruvate can be used in the citric acid cycle, or serve as a precursor for other metabolic reactions. Glycolysis occurs across species, and is an extremely important metabolic pathway, that enables to extract energy from food and produce ATP. In humans, glycolysis contributes to energy production at rest but becomes predominant during short and intense physical activity, lasting between 10 seconds to 2 to 3 minutes. The amount of ATP that can be produced during glycolysis is limited. However, the combined action of the creatine phosphate and glycolytic system allows the muscles to generate force, even when the oxygen supply is limited. The glycolysis anaerobic pathway is more predominant and provides most of the energy for medium duration physical activities, such as wrestling, sprint swimming, or bodybuilding. This pathway, 
produces relatively quickly a significant amount of energy to fuel muscular contraction, and partially compensating, when the ATP creatine phosphate system begins to phase out. So if you are involved in sport, or physical activity that requires high energy production, consider that the amount of carbohydrates in your diet, should be adequate for producing the energy needed to power your activity. Thanks for watching. Share this video with friends. If you would like to get notified with the content of this channel, click the notification bell, next to subscribed. Don't forget to write your comments in the section below this video.